Welcome back. It is Friday, August 4th, and the MLB, our two favorite picks, are on the way. It's Austin, joined by Logan, and today, for the first time in a hot minute, joined by a special guest. Get it out, Logan. The brooms are here. A 3-0 day. We needed it in the worst way. Let's talk about it. Ellie Dela Cruz over one and a half bases. Didn't even take that many pitches for him to get it done. First pitch, launch it into the seats. We'll take that. Then we had Kyle Tucker and Nico Horner to get a, to hit, to get a hit. They both, I think Herner had at least a double. Tucker hit one in the bleachers as well. And then White Sox plus one and a half, first five early game play. Sweaty, but we got it done. A 3-0 and sweep. Quietly on a 6-1 and run. Maybe this is the streak we've been looking for over the past couple of months. Hopefully this we can turn this into a little bit of momentum. But first off, I want to talk about the elephant in the room. Logan and I are recording this a little bit early. We're recording it on Thursday night. So you'll see him when Logan talks about his pick. He doesn't have odds, and we're going to add some more picks. So these aren't just going to be our two picks that we're going to have for Friday. We're going to have more picks in the pin comment, probably have a hit parlay, maybe another base prop, more things, plus updated odds for Logan's pick, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So check out the pin comment. We'll have all that stuff in there by like 12 p.m. Eastern time. So you have plenty of time to enter it. Number two, if you are in Philly, we're talking about it. We are going to be in Philadelphia today, and we're going to be at Xfinity Live pregame for the Phillies game from about 5 p.m. to about six ish or so and then we're obviously going to the phillies and royals game we obviously talked about this a couple weeks ago but xfinity live 5 p.m hopefully we see you guys there we're going to be there well last time we were at xfinity live a bunch of you showed up and it was awesome hopefully we'll do it again drinks on us come show up like i said we'll be in philly tomorrow today we'll be in new york city tomorrow we'll be at stands in the morning we'll post we'll talk about that tomorrow morning and then of course we'll be in sunday we'll be in baltimore and we'll talk about that when we get there and now let's talk about two more notes i know it's a long intro Last two more notes. Parlay of the day is back. We smacked both of them, Monday and Wednesday. We're going to Friday. We're going to try to smack another one, another three-leg hit parlay. Check it out. Top link in the description. It'll be live by the time this video goes live. And finally, number four, if you want to sign up for Bet365, I try to hammer it into your guys' heads. If you are in one of the following states, New Jersey, Ohio, Virginia, Colorado, or Iowa, definitely take advantage of it. They have the best odds for hit parlays that I normally see across the books. And if you bet... Just if you look, if all you have to do, sign up with the top the second to top link in the description because the top link's the parlay of the day. You deposit ten dollars, make a one dollar money line bet on any MLB team on Friday, you get two hundred dollars worth of bonus bets, regardless of if it wins or loses. Like I said, they have great odds for hit parlays. That's why you normally see Logan and I when we talk about our hit parlays. We're trying to take them there because they have the best odds. So again, New Jersey, Ohio, Virginia, Colorado, and Iowa. That's the end of my spiel. Logan, I was gonna say I said I was gonna go first, but I'm gonna let you lead it off since I've been talking for too long. Where are you going today and where are we gonna update the odds after? Afterwards. Yeah, it's it's good that it's good that we're going to this one because it's the earlier start time, the earliest game on the slate. And I'm taking old reliable Austin Riley over one and a half total bases. Odds TBD, as Austin mentioned, we are recording this one early. I don't have the odds for it. Yes, I know it's kind of crazy going with a pick before I know the odds on it, but I can imagine they, I shouldn't. It shouldn't be juiced over to minus one twenty-five. Like that's where I would play it up to. If for some reason it is higher than that, then you just got to take a step back, and I'll still probably play it because I love Austin Riley. But a cash here and Austin Riley will solidify himself as a COS Hall of Famer. Between him hitting, you know, timely hitting, between him and the home runs for us this year. Riley just is, is a great hitter this year. He's absolutely amazing. And he's it has a great matchup today versus Kyle Hendricks at Wrigley Field. In his last 10 games, Riley's hitting 333, which is obviously an amazing batting average in its own right. One in every three at bats results in a hit. And that's kind of what we need for him today. We we need a little bit more than just a hit, though. We need extra base hits, which that's honestly fine for a guy like Riley. It's a percentage play to take Riley to get two plus bases because it's something he's done in six straight games. So knock on wood, hopefully Mr. Riley can continue that for us today. He's always a threat to, to hit a home run. He has two home runs in his last four games. That counts as four bases. If you want to sprinkle the home run, go for it. We're not picking dingers today, but Austin Riley would be a great candidate as always uh, for home runs. Against Kyle Hendricks too, Riley, four for six, hitting 667 with two singles, a double, and a home run against Kyle Hendricks. Look, Kyle Hendricks is just not, not a pitcher I'm scared of one bit. It's a pitch-to-contact pitcher that gives up a ton of hits, and when he gets hit, he gets hit hard. And, you know, we see them result in extra base hits a lot. Hendricks has given up eight-plus hits in three out of his last five starts. So I, I, I expect no different from, from him facing a just ridiculous Braves offense today. At Wrigley, Hendricks is allowing a 283 opponent's batting average compared to only a 202 opponent's batting average on the road. Good news for us today. He's pitching at home. And he just he, Wrigley has not been all that kind to him this year. And we last point of note, we know Riley will get nine innings of guaranteed at-bats as the road team. And he should have opportunities to against that Cubs bullpen. I know they've been improved. 
but I still think there's there should be op- run opportunities all throughout this this uh, game. Look, the Braves lineup is just you know they're overpowered as as we've always talked about. And I, I you can't pitch around Austin Riley because you got Matt Olson sitting behind him. So Austin Riley to get two plus bases is going to be you know my my best bet of the day. But Austin, what are you going with today? Logan, as you touched on, we aren't giving out any home run picks today, although the guy I'm going to go with would have been my pick, and I won't lie to you guys, I'm probably going to be sprinkling on him to hit a dinger. But let's talk with this guy. It's going to be a, in a different game, a game that we just finished right after a recording this. It's Jordan Alvarez of the Houston Astros, over one and a half bases, minus 105 on drafting. So I do have odds for this one. I'm locking it in because I would be very surprised this was minus 105. You know, by first pitch, I would fully anticipate it to be closer to minus 120, minus 125. Like I said, I don't really like taking base props past that juice. Just not really worth it in case the guy does get walked a bunch of times. But let's talk about Alvarez because on Thursday, he did not get it done. One for three with a single and a walk. Now, unfortunately, walks don't count towards total bases or else I would guarantee you, Jordan would be, his line would be two and a half hours a case because he does draw some walks. And that is, a, you know, a cost for concern here today. But I like the matchup so much that even if he wants to walk once or even twice, I think he can get this done. Now, look at Alvarez going to face Luis Severino. And Severino's really been struggling against lefties, allowing a 360 batting average to lefties with a 1.068 OPS. Is that bad? Yeah, it's, it's not very good. He's allowed 20 extra base hits and 125 at bats to lefties. This is a guy in Alvarez. Don't only want to get to hit. Good chance it's an extra base hit. Very similar to a guy like Matt Olson when they get c- connect their barrel to the to the ball. Doing good things. And Alvarez has some experience against Severino. Not the best. One for six with two walks, but that was Severino of the past. What the version of Severino he might see today, we don't know. I mean, this is Severino after his last start, giving up what nine earned runs against the Orioles on Sunday night baseball. He came out and said flat out, I'm the worst pitcher in the game. And while I anticipate him to bounce back, how much better can he bounce back? It's not like he just had one bad start. This is a guy with a seven and a half ERA, a 1.84 whip. You you have to earn those numbers. You can't just have one bad start and just say, oh, it was just a fluke. This is a guy that's been struggling all year. And I think Alvarez will be able to do something with it. And we look at the pitches that he's going to see. You're looking at a guy that's going to throw a lot of fastballs. 51% of the time, Severino's throwing a fastball, 20, 20% changeup, 17% slider. Alvarez versus those pitches, a 300 batting average versus the four-seamer with a 69% hard hit percentage, 375 versus the change up with a 33.3 hard hit percentage and 268 versus the slider with a 38% hard hit percentage. Those hard hit percentages are a little bit down compared to last year, but this is still a guy in Alvarez that can power it. And especially in right field with that short porch, Alvarez wouldn't surprise me if he hit one into the bleachers today. This is the guy in Severino that's thrown a lot of fastballs. Hasn't really been walking lefties a ton, but obviously always a cause for concern if you want to walk Alvarez and pitch around him. But still, at the end of the day, Severino's just been struggling so bad. I think he could leave one in the middle of the plate and Jordan could do something with it. And you look at Severino Severino's percentiles, sixth and hard hit percentage, third and expected batting average, third percentile and expected slugging, 10th and barrel percentage, 10th and whip percentage, and then 45th and walk percentage. So right middle of the pack and walks. Hopefully he doesn't want to walk Sever- or Alvarez today. He's just throwing stuff down the middle of the plate. And I'm really confident Jordan can do something with it. He's been scorching hot since he returned from injury. Also, like I said, they could walk and pitch around him. Or Jose Abreu did decently last night. Chaz McCormick's been scorching hot over the past couple weeks. He's right behind him. So I don't really think you want to do that. Alvarez, last note, career 357 batting average in Yankee Stadium. We'll see him on Saturday to watch him. Hopefully, you know, Yankees fans aren't down bad on Saturday. Hopefully he gets his home run out of the system on Friday. I'm riding with Jordan Alvarez over in bases. Minus 105 on DraftKings. I really love it. Logan, I'm going to let you touch on a couple plays that you did consider and probably we will add as the day goes on. But obviously check that pinned comment for any added plays. Logan, I'll let you touch on a couple before I give a couple leans for myself. Yeah, for sure. One of them... Uh, is is going to be a really curious one, and this is an ultimate buy low spot. Trey Turner of the Phillies. I'm looking at his over, you know, one and a half hits, runs, RBIs, and we don't obviously have a line for it. And obviously, there's there's a lot to be determined with Trey Turner. Obviously, he's he's struggling mightily, and, and he returns home. He gets a great matchup versus Jordan Lyles today. And yeah, as, as you mentioned, Austin, we will be at that game. And yes, a little bit of Homer in me wants to, you know, see Trey Turner and root him on because I've been on, I've been on Twitter or now called X, and everyone is talking about how they just want to give a standing ovation to Trey and just uplift him after he after his struggles. I mean, he's one of those guys that obviously they are paying a lot of money and obviously they expect better results, but he is really 
visibly upset and he, he is trying his absolute hardest. He has good history versus Jordan Lyle, so that's why I'm concerned that one as a lean. And then the other one would be some v- sort of version of a hit parlay, as you mentioned with your Jordan Alvarez pick. Lefties a- a- against Severino? Yeah, sure. Kyle Tucker, we could easily run it back. And I think we we definitely will run run back a hit parlay with Kyle Tucker. We just need to find out who we're going to pair him with because, you know, we want odds that, that will make sense. But you got you got some other leans for us as well, too. Yeah, I mean, look, we, we could have came out and forced a couple more picks or put these in the video, but everything has to have a price. You know, if they put out Trey Turner at like minus 160, we're not going to take that because we don't take juice props like that. Same thing for some base props, which I'll touch on two right here, plus a game pick. I looked at Freddie Freeman's over in bases. Same thing for Matt McClain. Both, I like their matchups. However, I don't know their lines. You know, if they put out a minus 135 base prop, I'm not going to do it just because I won't do it. So I, we're going to wait. Obviously, check that pin comment. Honestly, by the time you're watching this, there's probably a good chance we've already added one play, updated Dawson Riley's odds. Maybe we added two or more plays just because the card is, is loaded on Friday. And Logan and I hypothetically think the juice balls come on Friday, which is why there is no Nerfy today. We can, we considered the Marlins, but we can't do it. Just juice balls come up. Although Jesus Lazardo, the Nerfy goat, is on the mound if you want to take it. So, look, Freeman and McLean like them. Maybe they'll be added after the fact. And then a game pick I looked at, which Logan and I really disagree on i looked at the red sox minus a half in the first five although they are quite square i won't lie to you red sox first five run line is square manoa versus paxton and the blue jays like to show up on the road in fenway so i'm not doing it because logan really hates it and he can touch on it in a second but i i just wanted to fade manoa but yeah every time i think the red sox are going to easily get a no sweat win their bats just don't show up or their pitcher yeah guys throw, i just can't do it but i would definitely consider it but logan you can rant about the red sox pick that i consider no look just like a couple days ago when you vetoed my nerfie and i just had to sit here and say okay i guess i vetoed that red sox pick i i won't let you lose coin on that team the matchup looks good on paper uh, you know against manoa and manoa is one of those guys that puts on free base runners my question for you is do you trust the Red Sox hitters consistently to get those timely hits and to get them against Manoa? I just don't. And honestly, the Blue Jays, going back to last year, they really did like hitting at Fenway. They've only had one series at Fenway this year, and they didn't hit all that impressive. But if you told me the the Blue Jays, who look like an absolute pitiful garbage team right now, if you told me they showed up against their, their division rival Red Sox, I wouldn't call that surprising at all. So I'm just saying it's one of those picks that it's like, if it's a coin flip, and it's kind of a coin flip price on that one, I, th- I think we can find better value on our props today, though. Yeah, I totally understand. We've been doing really well in the base props. Going to stick to it. So that's going to wrap it up. Reminder about my couple notes. Number one, added plays. Check the pinned comment. We're definitely going to add at least one play. So check that out. Number two, if you are in Philly and you want to come out and meet us, we'll be at the Royals game. I will post the, you know, I, I'll post whatever tickets and sections. I already have posted the section, but I'll post it later. We'll be at Xfinity Live pregame. If you want to come meet us, 5 p.m. We'll see you guys there. Parlay of the day, link right under my face. Go check it out. We've hit two in a row. If this one hits, we're giving away all the winnings. Check out how to enter that on uh, Twitter at Colin or Shot. Number four, Bet365. If you want to sign up, take advantage of all the hit parlay odds that really give out good prices on. So all the details down below in the description. Go check it out. Logan and I, hopefully we see some of you on Friday. Hopefully we have a great day. Hopefully we bring out the brooms again tomorrow. And we'll see you guys back in then. Sorry about the weirdo video with, you know, recording it early given we're on the road. But we'll see you guys back in tomorrow. Peace.